Good morning, everybody. It's Jennifer, and I'm from Get My CNL, and we are located at 1495 Topsail Road in Paradise. And we do all kinds of fun things at Get Messy. We do uh, birthday parties, um, we do summer camps, um, we have weekend fun activities for children. You can come in and paint. We have canvas paintings and plaster pets, all kinds of good things. So I'm on here today with you boys and girls to teach you how to paint a jellyfish for your underwater aquatic theme that you're having this week. Super cool. It's actually one of my favorite paintings and we've done it quite a few times now um, but it's so much fun we love it now if you do hear a little bit of noise in the background don't worry I'm just in my back staff area at Get Messy doing this painting today while my camp counselors are out in the front doing some art activities with the children so if you do hear background noise that's what that is so don't worry okay so all you have to do to start this activity off is you need a canvas I'm just using an 8x10 which is just a small canvas and this is a wooden framed back you need some paint colors, so these are the ones I'm using. White, orange, teal, pink, a light purple, and then a darker purple. So the dark purple is kind of like an eggplant color. It looks really black on this picture right here, but that's the color that we're using. Um, and I'm gonna show you how to mix those colors to make the background. All right, and then you need a couple of different size brushes. So I have a large brush, which I'm gonna use to paint my background. And then I have some smaller brushes that I'm gonna use for detailing. Okay, so if you only have one size brush, that's absolutely fine. We can make that work. And if you have a cup of water and a napkin, that would be great, just to kind of lay it by your side. But if you don't have that and you have a baby wipe, they work fantastic as well. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna dip our dry paintbrush into the water and just kind of dab it off a little bit so it's not like sopping wet. Um, and then we're gonna dip it into our white paint, just our white paint only. Okay, and we're gonna make a circle in the middle of our canvas. And I know you can't see this very well um, because it's white on white, um, but you can when it starts to dry. So as you can see, the white circle there. Okay, so we're gonna do a white circle in the middle, and that is kind of like the center focal point of our painting. And it doesn't matter really how big it is. That's how big I did mine. And it doesn't even matter if it's a perfect circle. It just matters that you have a white circle in the middle of your canvas. Or somewhere near the middle of the canvas okay so we're gonna leave that be and all I did was just simply went around in a circle like this no real technique used for that so then the next step is we're gonna dip into two colors okay we're gonna dip into our white so we're gonna not wash our paintbrush just leave the white on your brush and we're gonna dip into the white and the light purple okay so you want to have two of those colors as you can see on your brush and then we're gonna go around that white circle that we just did and kind of do another circle outlining that one. Okay, and it doesn't have to be really huge. Okay, it's just kind of like an outline around that one. So I'm just going to turn it towards me for a second so that I can see what I'm doing because it's hard when I'm showing you boys and girls. Because you kind of want it to blend in with the circle in the middle. Okay. And I'll show it to you again in a minute. Okay, so that's about the size that we're going to do that circle. All right, so the next step is we're going to do our white paint and our dark eggplant color. Okay, so we just have our white circle in the middle. And then around that, we went with our white and our light uh, purple paint. And actually, before we do that, I might just dip into my light purple paint and make a ring. So then, just dip into your light purple by itself, okay? And just kind of go around that one. And the reason why we're doing this is because we're doing a little bit of a blending technique. We're kind of making a background that almost reminds you of a marble. If you bite into a marble, the center of a marble, not a marble, a gobstopper I'm thinking about. You know gobstoppers, those candies that have different colors out when you suck on them? So if you think about that one or you picture that in your mind, we kind of want layers of our candy coating it's kind of silly hey and if your brush gets a little bit dry just dip it in your water a little tiny bit and tap it off just to kind of make it not so dry and that helps your paint spread a little bit okay so I'm just dipping in just with the light purple so I went white in the center just to recap uh, white and then the light purple and then I just did the light purple Okay, so let me blend mine now a little bit, and then I'll show you what I'm talking about. And, 
and this is fun because you can just kind of like play with it as much or as little as you like it doesn't have to be um, perfect you just want it to be um, what kind of look you're trying to get the effect that you're trying to get from it okay and see you're just making it like that all right if you want a little bit more lighter colors in the center you can go back and touch that up and then I just keep bringing my brush out to the edges cool hey eh? so you guys keep working on that part and I'm gonna to explain to you what we're gonna do next so next we're gonna go with our darkest color our eggplant color but we're gonna dip into the white again just like we did with the light purple okay so we want white and that eggplant color or the dark purple that you're using and then you're gonna go around that outside layer that you just did okay so white and eggplant all the way around and now your circle should be getting a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger and a little bit bigger every time you do it okay so you should be touching the edges of your canvas now like I said it doesn't matter um, how your colors are blending because everybody's is going to look different so even if you're looking at somebody next to you and you say gosh mine doesn't look like theirs that's totally okay because it's not going to I've painted this painting probably seven times now and every single time I do it it looks different it never ever looks the same okay so don't worry okay so I'm just going to touch mine up here and I'm going to show you what I'm doing so I'm still dipping into the white and then my dark purple and then I'm just kind of rubbing it on keep going in a circular motion around your circles that you already have made see that's all okay and we're gonna keep going and like I said it doesn't have to be even okay guys don't feel like it has to be even because it doesn't all right now let me see okay so then I have this done I just have my four corners left now if you can see so now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use my dark purple not with the white just the dark and I'm gonna do those corners and if you don't have really any corners left to do don't worry about that you can just do your edges if you want or you don't even have to use that it's completely up to you that's the cool thing about painting is that it's completely up to you what you want your painting to look like we can't tell you what kind of details or, or things to add because that's where your fun creativity comes into play and that's the one thing about painting that it doesn't matter so if you can see I've done my purple in my four corners and then you can paint down the sides okay like this that's called gallery wrapping when you do that and we do that so that when we put it up on the wall it looks finished now I'm not gonna paint my sides right now because where I'm teaching you how to paint this um, and I want it to be dry so I'm gonna wait until the end of mine to paint my sides I um, mean if you want to wait until the end you can too so the important thing is what to remember when you're painting is to not glob your paint on because it takes a really long time to dry if you put it on really thick and to be honest my painting is almost dry here now just from us taking the time to do each of the layers mine is just about ready and dry to do the top of the jellyfish okay so don't put it on thick just brush it on really super lightly put another coat on if you need to um, if you want to keep blending so that your colors all blend together you absolutely can um, I did this one very quickly but as you can see it kind of looks like you're looking down into a hole doesn't it like all the dark colors on the outside and it swirls into the into the middle so it's super cool so we're pretending that this is kind of like when you look into the water for a jellyfish floating around okay almost like a sunset is setting over the water and that's what's creating this purple hue so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a different size brush and we're gonna start with our white paint so it's really important to make sure your painting is dry um, if you kind of tilt it like this you can kind of see shiny spots from the light and if you see shiny spots that means that it's not fully dry yet so you can give it a little wave this is what I always do give it a little wave and that helps to dry it okay little wave you can blow on it 
and that'll help draw it as well. Okay? When we have birthday parties, we get to do like wave dances where we wave our canvases around, dance around. Okay? All right. Mine is pretty well dry there now. Okay, so now we're gonna draw the outline of our jellyfish. Now jellyfish for the body, what we're gonna make it kind of look like is like a jelly bean. It's gonna have a circular top and then it's gonna curve underneath, kind of like a jelly bean. So I'm gonna put mine in the corner. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna choose where you want the top of your jelly bean to go, or the top of your jellyfish, and then you're gonna draw its shape. So I always draw like this first, a curved line. Okay. Draw your curved line of the top of the shape. And then I kind of do a little jelly bean shape on the bottom. Okay? So hold this up for a second so you can see the shape. And then when you're done that, you're just going to color it in. Okay? So you're going to color all this in white. Right? Now it's really hard for me to paint this backwards in the video. So I'm just gonna leave it here for a second and then I'm gonna paint mine and I'll hold it up again. So you're gonna draw that shape, just pick a corner. You can put it more towards the center, um, more towards the corner. You can put it in the opposite corner, whatever you feel like. And um, draw the curved line at the top and then connect it with the little wavy line at the bottom. And then you'll color it in white, okay? So I'm gonna paint mine white now. All right. All right, so now when you start to do your jellyfish, sometimes the colors pull through from underneath and that's okay. So all you got to do then is wait for it to dry. You might need to blow on it, give it another little um, wave and then you should be able to put another coat of white on it. Okay, but that's okay because I'm going to show you another part while we're waiting for that. Okay, so I have mine colored in white. Now a jellyfish has like little tentacles that go down, right? So we're gonna make some tentacles. So with the other fun colors you have, I have orange and teal and pink, we're gonna make some squiggly lines for tentacles. And I'm also gonna put a couple of white ones in there. So we're just gonna start from the bottom of our fish and we're gonna make some squiggly lines down like this. And they don't have to be perfect. They don't have to be perfect, just squiggly lines. And then I'm just gonna give my brush a little wipe off. I'm not even gonna clean it. I'm just gonna wipe it on the napkin. And then I'm gonna pick a different color. So if I go with teal, I love teal. Start at the base of your jellyfish again and make a squiggly line down. And just keep going down until you run out of paint. Start at the base, squiggle all the way down. And keep doing that, just add a few in. And we're gonna add a few different colors, so you don't need to have a ton of each color squiggle, okay? So that was the green one. Now I might need to rinse off my brush a little bit with the green one before I go on to the next color. Okay, so now I'm gonna put some pink in, and you're gonna do the same thing. Start at the base, squiggle down. Start at the base, squiggle down. Okay, and they could be super long, or they might be. Okay, sorry about that, I had a little technical difficulty. All right, so I'm still on my squiggles. Okay, and then I'm gonna go into my orange squiggles and do the same thing. Okay. And the orange really makes a pop. See? And then what you wanna do is you wanna pick a color to put kind of between the bottom of the jellyfish and your tentacles. And I'm gonna choose orange because I really like orange. And you're kind of making almost like a little fuzzy belly where the tentacles attach. And I'll hold it up and show you now. See, I just kind of went along the base of the jellyfish with the orange and just kind of flicked my brush quickly and made like a little bushy uh, part, which we call the belly. <laughs> and then we attached our tentacles to that. All right, now you can see that my jellyfish has some purple shining through. So once that's dry, which it is there now, I'm gonna give it a second coat of white, okay? And that'll just make it pop a little bit more. And I'm kind of starting at the top of the jellyfish and painting down like this. And that kind of gives it almost a three-dimensional shape, okay? And kind of curve your line over. 
and I do like the purple shining through. I don't want to cover it all up, but I am going to put a little layer over it. Okay. So then what we're going to do is those same colors that we used for our tentacles, we're going to put some of them in the jellyfish, just kind of like little sub subtle lines. So if I was to choose the pink color, okay, I could go like this. Just kind of giving it a little bit of definition and kind of showing you that it's it's a curved shape, that it's not a flat shape, that it's kind of three-dimensional. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing with my orange. And orange, of course, is a little bit brighter. See? Just kind of putting some dashed lines in there. And now I'm going to do the same thing with my teal. See? Just kind of giving it a little bit more definition. So now we have a jellyfish kind of floating through the sun shining down through the ocean. All nice purple huey colors. And there's one thing left now that I want to do on this painting. I want to make some bubbles. And bubbles are super fun and they're easy to make. All you really have to do is make a circle and then you kind of make a little dashed line inside the circle um, to show that it's, it's three dimensional, that it's not a flat bubble. So you're gonna go with your white paint again Pick somewhere where you'd want a circle, where you'd want a bubble, and draw a circle. Okay. And then when you draw your circle, you're gonna put a little line like this, just to say that that's a bubble. Okay? And I'm gonna make a little tiny bubble next to that bubble. So you can kind of make as many or as little bubbles as you want. And if you don't want bubbles, that's totally okay too. So I made three bubbles next to my jellyfish, as you can see. And now I'm just gonna do a super easy trick. I'm gonna go with my white paint and just do some white dots around the background. And those could be kind of like bubbles coming up from the jellyfish. So I'm just using the back of my brush, making some white dots, like that, okay? And if you want, you can use the other colors too. If you want to put some orange dots and pink dots, sometimes kids want to draw starfish and all kinds of fun things. If you want to have a full underwater sea picture, you sure can. That's completely up to you. I kind of like leaving mine simple like this. Just a little jellyfish um, with some bubbles but like I said if you want to use your other fun colors that you have and use the back of your brush as well um, to dip into those paints and you can make some dots or maybe you want teal bubbles maybe you want some pink bubbles it's totally up to you it's your painting and I've even seen children uh, draw some green vines up from the floor to show like kind of some seaweed and things at the bottom of the ocean and if you want to do that that's super cool as well so here is our jellyfish painting our aquatic painting and the fun thing about this being a YouTube video is that you can pause it and watch it back as many times as you'd like to fix any little mistakes that you have on the way um, or to catch up on something if you weren't really sure so just to recap we did white in the center okay then we did white and the light purple around that then we did the light purple by itself then we did the white and the dark purple okay and then we just did the dark purple Okay, and to do the jellyfish, we used white. We made kind of like a jelly bean shape. We colored it in white. We used this small brush to make little tentacles of different colors from our fish. As you can see, I have some oranges and pinks and teals. Then we used our small brush to kind of give a little belly underneath to show where the tentacles attach to the jellyfish. Then I did another coat of paint over my white jellyfish just because some of the purple was shining through. And I kind of did it from the top down, down like this, in kind of strokes like this. So it made it look like it's a little bit three-dimensional. And then I used a little tiny brush to give some extra colors in my jellyfish. Super cool, hey? So I hope you guys had a great time today painting jellyfishes with me. I know I had a blast. 
Um, I know it's a little bit of a different world we're living in right now where we have to do these things virtually. Every other year I used to come out and visit all the camps and do this kind of thing. But unfortunately this year I am having my own Get Messy camp so that's super fun. But I wanted to make sure that I was able to offer some things virtually and when your camp counselors reached out to me I was super excited. So I want to say thank you so very much. Um, I hope you guys have a great summer camp and enjoy the beautiful weather we're having today. And uh, stop by and see us at Get Messy sometime. Thanks, see you.